I'm a believer that communication is all, it's 100% the responsibility of the sender. Um, it's not about how someone receives it. If someone receives it wrong, you've done it wrong. Welcome to Conversations That Matter, a podcast from Unifor. Here, we explore the latest customer experience trends, sales insights, innovations in AI and automation, and more with well-known thought leaders and industry experts. Tune in and join the conversation. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Conversations That Matter. I'm your host, Randy Ksar. And today, we have another exciting conversation because there's been a lot of talk about AI in the industry, no matter what industry that you're in. And so today we are talking to an expert on implementing conversational AI, and he has a laser focus on CX and optimizing bot containment. We'll get into that a little bit. And is someone who actually brings a nuanced tone when designing for large brands. And he's a product owner of virtual assistants at AGL, and it's none other than David Vader. David, welcome. Hey, thanks so much for having me. Uh, really excited to be on the show. And um Love your work. <laughs> Thanks, man. So uh, excited that you're here. Uh, we, uh, you know, don't get a lot of uh, insight from uh, from from Australia, and so this is a great time to kind of see how that community is over there and some of the consumer expectations. Um, so to start off the podcast, what we always like to do is we want to debunk a myth. What is mm. one myth that you would like to debunk around conversational AI and say customer experience uh, that you know, you're that you want to debunk that is constantly you have to repeat or maybe re explain to a lot of people. Yeah, well, I guess the biggest one as a conversational designer is that there is such a thing as a conversational designer. A lot of people are thinking that AI uh, or conversational AI in particular is 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 generated by um, by the AI. Unfortunately, <laughs> right. you know, what we read has to be still designed by someone, uh, for the most part. So when someone hears the title conversation designer, I'm explaining what I do. I, I tend to uh, draw a comparison with Siri or Alexa and I say, have you ever used these things? Well, those, uh, those sentences that you're hearing back have to be written by someone and, right. uh, and that someone is me, but not for Siri and Alexa, but for other ones. <laughs> right. Right. Um, yeah. uh, great. Uh, so uh, when did you get into the field? Uh, what was kind of your foray into AI and uh, love to hear kind of how you got started? Yeah, great. Um, so I'll give you the fast version. Uh, I started off working in, in sales um, and uh, door to door sales back in the day. Yeah. Then I jumped onto tele sales and then I eventually started writing uh, sales letters and emails and copy and blogs, that sort of thing. Um, mm -hmm. I, I left that job and I had started doing some freelance article writing. And someone just asked me, hey, you're a writer. I've got this weird uh, bot writing gig. And this was probably like five years, six years ago now mm -hmm. um, when things were still a little bit new and fresh. And I, I hadn't heard of that role before, but I thought I'd give it a crack and um, yeah. worked out quite well. I took to it well. I love the um, I love the the nuance that, that you have to, the attention that you have to bring to the, the sentences. Um, I used to joke that I'm a writer, um, but I don't I only probably write one or two sentences a day, but they're really good sentences. <laughs> <laughs> they're on point. They're perfect. Yeah. Hits the mark. Yeah. Nails it. Exactly. <laughs> um, all right. So, uh, let's get into uh, your job now, kind of fast forward to today. Uh, tell us uh, about your job. What is it? Uh, what's your kind of day to day? What does it entail? Yeah. So day to day, I'm um, running, uh, the operations, well, running the operations, running the uh, the virtual assistant out at AGL. It's a big energy company here in, in Australia. Mm -hmm. uh, we supply energy to huge numbers of Australians and have done for 180 years. Um, yeah. the, the, the portion that I look after is the virtual assistant at the moment. And um, so it's all about making sure that our virtual assistant capability is on point, is helping customers that we're able to... Uh, prevent customers from going to an agent if we can. Um, if we're able yeah. to, if someone is able to self-serve or use the virtual assistant instead of speaking to an agent, that's that's our job. So it's about optimizing for that. We call it containment. Um, and that that whole process is 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 so interesting and um, 
you know, I was talking before about the nuance of copy, uh, yeah. looking at how people how people are interacting with the bot, the the subtleties in language changes, and 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 how that has a, a broader effect. So it's all um, it's all very interesting. Yeah. So um, your day to day uh, sounds probably like a lot of people that are, are listening to our to our conversation, um, and you know, I, I think one of the things that I love about it is when I first started interacting with an AI bot, uh, I think one of the key things that I love uh, people to do is to say, you know, you are talking to a bot. Mm. A lot of times these bots don't even say that. And then you saw all of a sudden you're, you're, you're interacting with it and you're like, wait, wait a minute, am I talking to a real person or, or am I not? Cause the, the copywriting is so good. Um, yeah. But, but I think, um, you know, going forward, I think that would be a good recommendation. Don't you think that, you know, people need to understand when are they going, uh, when is it kind of the automation happening uh, from AI perspective? And when is it, when is that human agent um, joining the conversation? That's right. Yeah. I know that some companies do that. Um, probably smaller companies, I'd say, don't even say when it's a bot. Um, yeah. But the other thing is, is that the lines do kind of get blurred. We have a virtual yeah. assistant experience, which will, you know, which is fully automated and we tell everybody it's fully automated. And then if, if a user goes to a agent, that agent, of course, is having to type out a lot of the same answers every day. And yeah. so, you know, there's elements of predefined content where the agent knows what to say and has yeah, a button a script on the side script. that yeah. that is the same exact response. So yeah. that it, you know, I guess it can come across as a as a, a secondary bot if if <laughs> someone seems to be having a really simple conversation because that content that's being shown to them is usually predefined, um, yeah. but it's not a bot, it's a human. <laughs> hey, right, right. Yeah. Um, so speaking of customers, um, what do you guys do uh, to kind of understand the customer expectations? What kind of research do you guys do to help you build those requirements? The, uh, the best thing about being in this job is that there's no question that really can't be answered by looking at the hundreds of thousands of, of interactions that we have so the best research is not pulling together a focus group like you would do in ux or in design it's about uh, looking at the transcripts as a bulk and seeing where people flow in a conversational uh, flow where do they get stuck at what point do they request to speak to a human or at what point do they drop off for another reason and it's about analyzing that bulk data. And then once you've got some understanding of where people are getting stuck or where it can be optimized, you can look more closely at the actual transcripts themselves and and, and pick up the nuance in, in language. But, you know, the, the, th the thing that I really love about conversation design is that you have to be across uh, culture, humans at, in general. You have to understand how, how people work um, and people who are concerned with themselves first and foremost. And so when you're writing an interaction, you have to take all of that into consideration. Yeah, no, it, it's, a, it's a lot. I mean, I, I think yeah. uh, there is the, I mean, that's one of the things and part of my job when, when I'm doing social is like, you, you need to understand how people are emotionally connecting with the content mm. and, and how they uh, engage with it in order to be successful. You know, yeah not just in terms of what you post, but what you create, right? If it's not going to get the reaction that you want, then you're not going to get the engagement that you want. So I think the same thing can be said within a, yeah. within a bot, uh, no, or even just your, just even just a co contact center, uh, call, right? That's so right. It's all about, uh, I hate to say it, but it's all about empathy, right? I think that's, that's right. I mean, it, it sounds kind of cliche because, you know, yeah. we're told all the time in these customer roles that you need to view through the lens of the customer um but it really does come down to that it's it's surprising um, yeah. i remember at a, at a previous company i worked at uh we had a couple of different bots whose opening message was uh hi i'm blah blah the virtual assistant how how can we help today and uh one of our bots had been written by i think a developer or something mm -hmm. and it had the language slightly changed where it said, instead of how can I help today? It said, how can I help you today? And we noticed that that, that bot 
yeah, just the addition of the word you. And we noticed that that bot was performing about 8% better on that initial uh, oh, adoption. And we were like, what? Just the word you changes everything? So we tested and we chucked in the other bot and sure enough, it made a difference. Um, just the inclusion of the word you yeah. had people That's... had people thinking, you know what? I will give you a go. <laughs> yeah, that's, this that's thing awesome. understands me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They really love me. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, so uh, as people are interacting with it, uh, I'm sure you guys are getting lots of different data points coming in and you're trying to, you know, like you're saying, optimizing the bot containment. Uh, what kind of metrics uh, do you look at or, or insights do you look at? Um, well, you know, and what's what's the frequency? Yeah, so, um, so yeah, first and foremost, I think, um, we're looking at the, the user experience, making sure it's a good one. Can we provide a solution for this customer or do, na do they need to process their in inquiry through an agent? If it's through an agent, the, the sole purpose becomes how do I uh, collect as much data as possible so that the agent doesn't have to? How do I you know, set the expectations right for the customer so the agent doesn't have to? So it's about minimizing the time that the agent is spending. Now, in scenarios where the bot the virtual assistant can help directly or the customer is able to self-serve via tools that are available elsewhere uh, yeah. through the digital experience. It's all about how do I explain to the customer, how do I retain the customer in this experience so they understand they're able to do it themselves because that provides not only a benefit for that single interaction where they don't need to speak to an agent, hence saving right. the company money, but it also helps down the line in that the customer is more likely to, to give the virtual assistant a go next time or to, to find the self-service tools um, next time as well. Yeah. Um, so for those of you that are listening in or watching us, uh, thank you for listening in. This is the Conversations That Matter podcast. We're talking to David Vader here from AGL in Australia. And David, this has been a great conversation so far. So let's uh, keep on going. Let's uh, do it. For those that, yeah, let's do it. And for those that want to join in the conversation or have a question, whether listening to it uh, on demand or, or live, um, you just can just use that hashtag CTM podcast. That's CTM podcast. And uh, we will curate those questions and make sure to get back to you guys. Awesome. Um, so uh, let's talk about you know, some, some advice to those that are listening in that are perhaps starting their journey uh, on improving, you know, optimizing, you know, bot containment, but, but even more so before that, they haven't adopted AI yet. Mm. You know, for a company that's looking to to do that, where do they start? What's the the what were some thoughts around that? Um, I know a lot of questions that I always get uh, is around build or buy, um, but I'd love to get your thoughts on where where should people start on their AI journey if they're bringing it into the enterprise? Yeah, I mean, the build or buy is an interesting question. I I don't really have a an answer because I have always built. Um, and I don't know what the buying is like out there. I don't know if you can go to an agency and just get a, a bot built up and whether they are really able to do it justice. I'm sure there are really great agencies yeah. out there to do that. Yeah. But um, yeah, from the building perspective, you know, the first thing, if I was starting completely fresh, the first yeah. thing I would do is start looking at the existing interactions that you're having with customers and finding out where are the biggest drivers of those interactions and out of those, once you've got a list of those interactions, um, it's about which ones would a virtual assistant be able to help with? If you're getting a lot of inquiries around your opening hours, you're going to put that in your on your phone IVR as a restaurant, as an example. Right. You know, yeah. say, hey, this is Leo's restaurant. We're open from blah, blah, blah. But, um, you know, it's the same thing with, with chat interactions. It's the same thing with, with bigger companies. If you've got a lot of customers that are coming in and saying, hey, I don't know where to download a bill. Well, that's that's probably the first thing you should do because every every company essentially that, that bills um, has an op option for, for a user yeah, to yeah. download a bill somewhere. So really it's about listening first, uh, understanding what the drivers are for your contacts and then uh, designing intents um, and flows around that. The, I guess the second step is uh, when it comes to the optimization is to figure mm -hmm. out out of those intents that, that users are hitting, yeah. uh, where, are, where are people getting stuck in that flow and how can I explain things better, you know? 
Yep. I'm, a, I'm a believer that communication is all, it's a hundred percent the responsibility of the sender. Um, it's not about how someone receives it. If someone receives it wrong, you've done it wrong. Um, yeah. yeah. I believe that too. Yeah. We have, yeah, uh, we had another self discovery. Example. It's key. Yeah. Uh, just another example of that is, um, a, a previous company I was working at, uh, which have a lot of customers that come in and ask for extensions on paying their bill. Um, it was like a high driver of falls, I think some 30, 10, 10 to 13% or something of the total volume was people yeah. asking for a, a, a payment extension. Um, and that's how they would refer to it. They refer to it as a payment extension and all of the language internally was uh, an, an account arrangement or a payment <laughs> arrangement. Yeah. And so, you know, customers come in and say, I need a payment extension. And the bot would, you know, recognize it, but it would say, no problem. I can help you with a payment arrangement. It was changed their <laughs> language. So like, <laughs> that's, um, that's, that's, that to me is, is immediately, uh, is an issue is it, the designer is not listening to what the customer is saying. You know, you use someone's language back at them and, and those sort of yeah. things build trust, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's a good point. That's a good example. Um, all right, let's, um, you know, one of the things, uh, that I think we've known in the industry, uh, is that it changes so fast. Uh, it's, you know, there's constant learning, uh, there's constant innovation through, through companies. I mean, take a look at where we were six months ago. Um, you know, now generative AI is, is taking the storm. There's announcements by all the major companies. Um, yeah. What what are your thoughts on kind of how do you how do you keep on learning? Uh, you know, where do you go for for learning? Is there people that you follow, websites that you look at? Like, what, how do you keep up to date on the tech? Yeah, it's a good question, man. I think because I'm in the space, a lot of people send me stuff. Um, but one thing I do keep tabs on is uh, in one one of the tools that we use is VoiceFlow to create designs. They have a great blog. They have a great forum um, that I keep tabs on. And they're always announcing things through there, keeping keeping people up to date with uh, AI space. It's so interesting, man, where the future is going with all of this. I really thought that the optimization of of bots and language would would stay there, but in the future, I don't even see optimization of of Q and A pairs as relevant at all. You know, it's all going to be generative. If I can if I can plug a website into a into a uh, generative conversation in AI, say yeah. here, this is your training ground. Now answer all the questions that customers might have. Every single self-serve opportunity that exists in our website will all be generatively um, created as, as a customer's typing. So it's gonna feel so much more natural, but also it'll automatically be optimized. So really the way that, um, I know you didn't really ask uh, about uh, where the future of AI is heading, I guess. No, but that's a great off. segue. Yeah, <laughs> go but, for it. But um, I think that where it's where it's going, it has to be transactional. And that's yeah. um, where we're placing a little focus on. Uh, how do we how do we uh, take take a customer's inquiry and actually process it um, conversationally? Yeah, no, that's definitely... I think that's what consumers are expecting, right? Yeah. Uh, I think they... Are probably like why can't it do it? Yeah. <laughs> why can't why can't you know? It's like that one Seinfeld episode where he asked for a um, he was calling into the movie uh, hotline. He's like, why don't you just tell me the name of the movie? <laughs> I don't yeah. know if you remember that one. <laughs> Look it up on YouTube. Anybody? Uh, I forgot what it was called, but uh, it was Kramer pretending he was the the movie hotline uh, <laughs> attendant. Yeah. All right. Um, Let's get on to some uh, rapid fire. Uh, this has been uh, really enlightening, enlightening, and uh, love uh, that uh, you know you're sharing some really great uh, case studies that you did in the past, some examples and stats, and just kind of how you're doing it at AGL. So it's really cool to, to hear that. So I appreciate you sharing the the details. Cool. All right. So uh, rapid fire. Um, first thing that we want to do is we ask this question to everybody: If you were calling into a contact center. We're not talking about chatbots here, but if you were calling into a contact center and you could talk to the particular agent that could solve all your problems, everything would be would be good to go. And this person could be a celebrity, a musician, or an artist, uh, dead or alive. Who would that person be? 
Oh gosh. Uh, <laughs> how complex are my questions? Um, <laughs> hey, that, that, that's, you know, you're the first person to ask, answer that. Um, but yeah, no, uh, again, it, there's no wrong answer on this one. Uh, you know, do you want some humor? Do you want someone to like get the job done? That's the question. <laughs> uh, yeah, I am. Um, <laughs> I'm a, I'm a big comedy fan. So I might, um, I, I might just have Dave Chappelle, uh, pick up the phone <laughs> and answer my questions because <laughs> worst case scenario, if he's not able to help, he's at least able to entertain me. Uh, yeah, exactly. way. And you know, that guy's always telling amazing stories. So <laughs> I'm sure he'd entertain totally. me for a while and distract me from whatever problem that I have. <laughs> we should have more comedy on, uh, not that we want people on hold, but if you were on hold, there should be more comedy, kind of stand-up comedy. It's not, not a just, bad idea, really. Hire <laughs> hire a, a, a slew of comedians instead of yeah. hold music. Just have them doing stand-up to a oh to gosh. an empty room. <laughs> that I, I I challenge everyone listening in to put that on your. Uh, it's no more hold music. It's hold uh, stand-up comedy. There you go. <laughs> I love That's it. Great. Yeah. All right. Uh, what's one thing not on your LinkedIn profile? Oh, um, so I've recently, well, not recently. Uh, so I've taken up, um, photography a little while back. Uh, but, what camera do you use? Oh, I have a a seven R four Sony. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, we have Are you a photography man yourself? Uh, right now I'm using a a 6,300, uh, right oh. up here. And then, uh, so that's a little older. Uh, and I just got, um, where is it here? Right here. <clears throat> Let me look it up. Oh, we'll have. Yeah. I almost ended up getting the 6,600. Um, but, uh, a friend, um, slash mentor, uh, offered me his old camera and I okay. was like, it was too good to pass up. Um, offered me a great deal with, with a, yeah. with a lens and some other gear. So what do you have there? Oh. Uh, this is a Ken R5 C. So that's, Ken R5. Uh, Must so be that's, nice, man. Must be nice. That's that's a little expensive, but that's. And uh, what are you primarily shooting, Randy? Uh, I'm primarily shooting uh, my family photos. <laughs> yeah, cool. uh, and, and landscape photos, um, and then youth sports. Uh, so I usually I started off with this, and that was back in like 2006 or seven. I bought a camera at Circuit City, which is no longer, and uh, it was really expensive back then. But then um, the A6300, uh, this is getting into a whole other podcast, <laughs> but the A6300 is great uh, from a mirrorless perspective and it's so much easier to use. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I've, I mean, I mean, this is uh, the, my previous camera was, uh, was a Panasonic Lumix and yeah, um, yeah this is night and day. Uh, this is such a beautiful camera for portraits in particular, and it just works really well for what I'm using it for. Um, speaking awesome. of which, I like uh, right after this, I have to go to a shoot, um, which should be good fun. Cool. Well, yeah. thank you so much uh, for joining us. Uh, that's the end of our rapid fire. Uh, I appreciate you uh, joining us today and sharing all the all the details on on your on your day in the life of a you know a product owner uh, working on virtual assistants. Amazing. Thanks so much for having me, Randy. You're welcome. Well, thank you all for, for listening in. As always, if you want to hear more podcasts, make sure to tune into a whole bunch of other episodes that we got. Over 50 episodes since we started in July of 2020. And if you have any feedback for us, email us at podcast at unifor.com or rate and review our podcast on your favorite podcast player. Thanks, everyone. Have a wonderful day. And we'll hear you and talk to you on the next episode of Conversations That Matter. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Conversations That Matter. Subscribe to our podcast for more great content. And if you want to learn more about the topic we discuss, visit unifor.com today.